United States, demonstrations are continuing against virus lockdowns there. Protesters say stay-at-home orders violate their civil liberties. But it's what the government intends to do when society does reopen that's concerning privacy advocates. She had returns you reports from Washington. Listen, B1, this is coming the from Al Jazeera English. The Patriot Act was passed in the U.S. with no congressional debate. It allowed unprecedented surveillance with minimal oversight over American citizens. The alternative the government suggested was responsibility for another terrorist attack. Of the laundry list of um, things that the intelligence community had wanted for many years. At the time, there were assurances the measures would be temporary, but they've been routinely reauthorized by Congress. Yet mass surveillance proved ineffective, counterproductive, and the data was being used for purposes unrelated to terrorism. It was only... T- Did y'all hear that? Unrelated to terrorism. Y'all already know who this is. This is Back to the Basics. This is a Back to the Basics brief. And yes, I'm attempting to be brief. This is audio taken from Al Jazeera English. Yes, they went back to President Bush signing the lovely Patriot Act. Continuing. 12 years after the Patriot Act passed, with the whistleblowing of Edward Snowden, that we discovered the extent of the mass surveillance, and only then was the government's bulk collection of information about Americans limited. Now, with the spread of COVID-19, Snowden and others say there's an opportunity to learn from the past, as systems to monitor everyone's location at all times are being formalized in secret. Learn from the past... Hello, is this mic on? Yeah, this mic better be on. Tracking everyone's location at all times are being formalized in secret? What? Mm hmm. At the point these policies are being sought, these benefits are theoretical. Often there is no evidence for them, and they may never materialize. That capability will exist in three months, in three years, and in 30 years, if we allow it to be implemented today. Edward Snowden. Disease do need to be located swiftly and closed off. And smartphone data is being used to locate those not adhering to social distancing requirements. But we have few specific details on data collection. Facebook and Google have been in talks with the government on sharing information they collect about us online. Facebook and Google. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's going down like that. And this is not a conspiracy theory. It's not. This is reality. Back to the brief. Line advertising companies that track our movements are discussing new COVID-19 revenue streams. The firm Palantir, whose data collection has been key to the Trump administration's deportation program, is creating COVID-19 models for the government. I think COVID washing is a good term for it. Essentially, companies um, are seeking to exploit this opportunity to honor their reputation and to set themselves up to normalize their techniques and to eventually profit from them. What's being called for is full transparency, exactly what information is being collected, by whom, how long is it being kept for, and how is it being used, particularly by law enforcement agencies. By law enforcement agencies. Oh, yeah, it just keeps going. I'm telling you. (laughs) Man, the times we are living in right now. Moving on. It is traditionally the disadvantaged in society who bear the weight of surveillance, right? Uh, you know, we talk about the color of surveillance. Well, the color of surveillance is black and brown. Did you hear what she said? The color of surveillance is black and brown. I know I don't like those terms either. But um, it makes it clear as to what particular racial groups (laughs) 
as far as who they're going to be surveilling. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uses, as some would say. Moving on. Um, and that's definitely something to be thinking about when you think about data, uh, when you think about health data, when you think about the ways in which health data could be misused. The ways that health data could be misused. Oh, interesting. You mean like the COVID-19 numbers? What? Hmm. Moving on. Uh, in a variety of particularly commercial contexts um, for to treat people differently uh, when they... To treat people differently. Oh yeah, we breaking this down. Moving on. And oh, she did say treat people differently. Yeah, that's right. Racial profiling? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we might see those riots again. You never know who's to say. And no, I'm not inciting violence. Of course not. We don't want to see that, but hey. Y'all better wake up. This is happening now. This ain't 1960. But we sure are seeing a lot of similarities. Moving on. They shouldn't be. The consequences of pandemic policy for civil liberties go beyond electronic surveillance. And precedent shows a robust debate needs to occur before policies are enacted and not after. Shia Britansi, Al Jazeera, Washington. Well, Ashok Kumar is a lecturer of international political economy at Birkbeck College at the University of London. He thinks governments should be more transparent. The issues that we had 20 years ago against terrorism and, um, and, and the war on terror, we didn't have access to that. A lot of it do was done behind closed doors. Now... Done behind closed doors. Oh, yeah, that kangaroo court. As some people may say. Yes, indeed. Y'all think this is a joke. This is not a joke. This is not a, a conspiracy theory. This is reality. We need to know what are the question, what are the actual measures that states uh, and private institutions and federal government and state governments are taking that are undermining, potentially undermining uh, civil liberties. There's no longer the question of state security that needs to be applied. So we don't need to necessarily um, make the same mistakes we did 20 years ago. So I think sunlight and more um, in, in terms of um, allowing for uh, civil liberties groups, but also the public, to know exactly what government is doing is the first, is the first step, uh, because we don't really know have access to that. It's certainly the case that in periods of crisis, when civil liberties have been taken away, that it's, it's difficult for those civil liberties to be won back. It's difficult for liberties to be won back. Y'all still think this is a game. This is not a game. This is reality. You not see what could be coming up here shortly? It's already there. It's already there. Y'all thought the 1960s were bad. <laughs> we might see worse than that. Who's to say? It's possible. You know, because the environment... For it has already been set up. Moving on. Without a degree of struggle. Well, the British Prime Minister is due to return to work on... Okay, so now they're going to go into Boris Johnson. I'm not really concerned about that. So, this is back to the basics. I was just, you know, poking around on YouTube... Checking out Al Jazeera English li uh, live. And that was just what popped up here a little bit ago. 
So I said, hey, might as well do some commentary. This isn't a necessarily an episode. This is just a back to the basics brief. I'm trying to keep it brief. Let me see here how long I've been recording. Oh, nice. We is under 15 minutes. We is good. We is in the house. So thank you for listening. Um, definitely going to probably put this on. Let me see. Spreaker. Anchor. Yeah. And of course, YouTube. But again, like was mentioned, we need to learn from the past. I'm not the only YouTube content creator who has said this. Someone else has also said that in his podcast. In fact, he just did a podcast talking about Denver and how when they eased restrictions during the uh, Spanish flu actually it was in Denver right yeah when they eased restriction in Denver what what how terrible what happened there And y'all already know I'm talking about the Information Man Speaks podcast, so don't even play around. Oh yeah, here we go. When Denver backed off social distancing, yeah, I already, you know, listened and heard that. And yes, y'all need to go over there and subscribe to the Information Man show. Go subscribe to the Information Man Speaks podcast. And you know, he's on speaker and... (laughs) What, eight other platforms? Spotify, iHeart. This is where I need his soundbite. But anyway. This is happening. This uh, This is not a game. This is real. We need to really learn from the past. How many times does this have to happen and we still make some of the, you know, some of some similar choices? It's like, dang, we didn't even learn? And I know there's people out there where you know history, you know it's not important, and you know that, well, can you not see the pattern here? Can you not see that stuff has pretty much gone, is coming to a full circle? Like, you don't see that? You you don't see that. Well, see, I see that. Nah, I can't, I'm not ignoring the past. Hey, you do what you do. That's on you. The information has been put out it is still going to be put out and with that you know may the most high be with you and continue to protect you and guide your footsteps I love you as a sister I'm gone <laughs>